When you look at huge tech companies, almost all of their founders are very well known. Bill Gates founded Microsoft, Mark Zuckerberg founded Facebook, Steve Jobs, Apple, and so on. But what about YouTube? It is the most popular video sharing platform in the world, but can you name its founders? Probably not. Most of us associate YouTube with Google as it bought YouTube very early on. But YouTube was founded by three guys who sold YouTube to Google for $1.65 billion. So who started YouTube and where did they disappear after that? We will be answering these questions today. Let's get started. Let's talk about our first founder, Jawad Karim. Some of you might have seen him in this video without recognizing who he is. This is the first video ever uploaded on YouTube and it has around 281 million views. He came up with the idea for YouTube after he could not find video clips on the internet. As the story goes, Jawad was trying to find the clips for the 38th Super Bowl halftime show or the massive 2004 tsunami and earthquake in India. A very typical founding story, I know. To understand why he disappeared from the spotlight, we need to understand his background first. Jawad Karim was born in East Germany on October 28, 1979. Both of his parents were researchers, which may be why Karim also had a deep love for education and learning. His family along with him fled from communist rule in East Germany. When Karim was about 12 or 13, the family moved again to America to follow the good old American dream. He attended the local high school in Minnesota and started studying computer science at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Campaign. While he was still a full-time university student, Karim joined PayPal, and this is where the story of YouTube started. Karim realized that he would learn more by working at the office than by being on campus, and you guessed it right. Like a very stereotypical tech founder, he left campus to pursue his work. But this is where the similarities end. Kareem was not your typical tech founder. As much as he loved being hands-on and working, he loved education and learning. He loved the learning process. So yes, he left the campus, but unlike other many famous tech founders, he did not actually drop out of college. He continued his education remotely, even while he was working with PayPal and eventually on YouTube. It took him seven years to graduate. While at PayPal, he met two other guys who would end up becoming the founders of YouTube. As the story goes, Kareem was trying to find the clip of Janet Jackson's wardrobe malfunction at the Super Bowl in 2004. After not being able to find the videos he wanted, Kareem thought, hey, why not make a platform of our own? And that's what they did. He proposed his idea to his two friends, Chad Hurley and Steve Chen. Like Kareem, they both worked at PayPal. In May 2005, the beta version of YouTube was launched, and to say it was an instant hit would be an understatement. Within six months, YouTube was getting 8 million views per day. Keep in mind this was 2005, not 2023, when you can easily get 1 million users for a newly launched app in a day or two. This was when most people around the world did not even have access to the internet or a PC. Quite remarkable, right? This is why it was able to get Google's attention so quickly. Soon after YouTube was founded, he stepped away. He was much more interested in pursuing an academic career, so he joined Stanford for his master's in computer science and would later complete his PhD. As he stepped away so early from the company and also was not in any executive role, Kareem ended up receiving the lowest payout when YouTube was bought by Google in 2006 for $1.65 billion. This amount was paid in stocks and Kareem received 137,443 shares, which was worth $64 million at the time. Nobody knows if Kareem held on to his shares or cashed them out. After this, he went on to found his own venture capital firm called University Ventures, now known as Y Ventures. Kareem is also one of the first investors of Airbnb. His company Y Ventures has invested in many other companies like Palantir, Reddit, and Eventbrite. So where is he now? Not much is known about him. Let's just say he is not a public figure. He does not use any social media, nor has been photographed in public or at events. Interestingly, rather than using Twitter or other social media to voice his opinions, he occasionally uses the description box of his and YouTube's first video, Me at the Zoo. They are more of a criticism of YouTube. In 2013, he criticized their decision to make users use Google Plus accounts to comment. In November 2021, he updated the description of the video to criticize YouTube's decision to remove the dislike button. The description was updated in early 2023, and now there are just the chapters in his video. As far as social appearance and comments go, that's about it from Kareem's side. We have no clue what he is up to now, and there is no way of knowing it as well. 
Now let's talk about YouTube's other founder, Chad Hurley. Chad Hurley was born on the 24th of January, 1977 in Reading, Pennsylvania. He wasn't your typical founder either. Although he studied computer science, he was much more interested in fine arts. He would often sell his art during his school days. He went to Indiana University of Pennsylvania for college, but even in PayPal, he was hired as a UI designer. Chad was the one who registered the trademark and domain of YouTube.com on Valentine's Day in 2005. Among the three founders, he was sort of the face of YouTube. He became the first CEO of YouTube and also was the biggest earner when they sold the company to Google. Chad received a total of 694,087 shares from Google directly and the rest of 41,232 through a trust. Those shares were worth $345 million at that time. He also stayed with YouTube longer than any of the founders. He resigned as the CEO of YouTube in 2010. After YouTube, he moved on to other business ventures. One of his most known and notable business ventures is a video sharing app called Mixbit. This app somewhat resembled Vine and Instagram and also landed him in a lawsuit with Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. Chad was present during the engagement of Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. At that time, his app had not gained any momentum, so to gain some, he decided to film and upload the engagement video in his app, even if he had signed a confidentiality agreement. As with most celebrities, the couple was planning on selling the exclusive rights of their engagement video to E! Entertainment, but with Chad uploading it on his app, they could not do so. As a result, they sued him and they won. He was made to pay them a settlement of 440000 Not a big amount for a guy who was worth around $350 million plus. Also, I think it was worth taking the risk. That 440000 would be like a marketing expense had the app taken off, but sadly, it did not perform well in the market. Along with this, he also co-founded the AVO system along with the other co-founder of YouTube, Steve Chen. This was an incubator company that allowed developers to develop and test their apps. He also has investments in various other things. He has minor ownership of the NBA's Golden State Warriors and the MLS Los Angeles Football Club. He was a major investor in one of the US F1 team, which was one of the new entrants for the 2010 season, but the team shut down before taking part in F1. On January 25th, 2021, Chad announced on Twitter that he has become an investor at Leeds United, the English Premier League football club. He is also not much in the public eye and likes to keep much of his life private. This brings us to the last founder of YouTube, Steve Chen. Steve Chen was born on August 25, 1978 in Taipei, Taiwan. His family immigrated to the United States when he was seven. Like Kareem, he too studied computer science at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Like the other two founders, he was also working at PayPal. Not only PayPal, he also worked at Facebook during its early days, but left the company to work on building YouTube. Safe to say that worked out pretty well for him. Chad became the CEO, and Chen took the position of Chief Technology Officer in the company. He also played an important financial role in starting the company, as the early costs of the inception of YouTube were all covered by Chen's credit cards. Along with this, he also secured early funding through his network. When YouTube was sold to Google, Chen received 620,366 shares of Google and an additional 68,721 in a trust. He left YouTube soon after the sale to Google. He co-founded other companies with Chad Hurley, most notably Avos Systems. In 2016, Chen started a live streaming food network, nom.com. The company did not perform well and was shut down in 2017. Since then, there has been no news of any notable investments from him or his involvement in a big company. Like the other founders, he too prefers to stay away from the public eye. From his occasional Instagram posts, it looks like Chen has moved back to Taiwan and is living there with his wife and two sons. A simple decision to build a platform solely for videos after the frustration of not being able to view clips changed the internet. It would not be an over-exaggeration to say that YouTube has changed not only the internet, but the whole world. It truly has become an integral part of our lives. There will rarely be people who have access to the internet, but do not use YouTube in their daily lives. As for the lives of the three founders, let's just say they like to stay low-key. So, what do you think about YouTube's founders? Did you know about them? Comment that down below, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. 